G'day all. Back to another rolling review for Urban Wheels today. And as you can see, we've upgraded the Wolf Warrior a little bit today. Riding the Wolf Warrior 11 Plus. Um, if you've been watching our channel, you probably would have seen a bit of riding of the 10 Plus. So today we're going to give this 11 a bit of a go out here on some of these rural roads and see how it performs. So the biggest difference between the 10, Wolf Warrior 10 and Wolf Warrior 11 um, is your motor size. So the Wolf Warrior 11 running dual 1200 watt motors. 1200 in the front, 1200 in the rear. Um, obviously when you push the dual motor button there, you're putting out 2400 watt, which is quite quick. Right now traveling in single motor, gets about 60 kilometers an hour, very stable. Um, another major difference between the 10 and 11 is the wheel size. This is 11 inches of pneumatic rubber, which gives you great grip, which gives you great grip on these dirt roads. Um, compared to the 10, these pneumatic wheels are a little bit wider. And to be honest, I can tell you right now that it is probably a little bit more stable on this surface than what the 10 was. are a bit wider, a bit larger. So it's a very smooth ride on the Wolf Warrior 11. Even when we're going over some of this rough stuff, a bit of corrugation on the road, loose gravel. Change of terrain there. It does remarkably well. Whoa, so as you can see, pretty rough there over that corrugation. But the dual fork suspension and the pneumatic wheels handle really well. Now the size of the deck is actually larger than the 10 as well. Oh, so it's a lot heavier than the 10. With the Wolf Warrior 11 being a bigger unit, it does come with a bigger battery. Samsung and you get 150 kilometers of range. Now that's a long ride, 150 kilometers. So I suppose the extra room on the arm, um, extra room on the deck, is going to come in handy if you plan on doing in excess of 100 kilometers of range. Wobbles there at about 60, no, 63 kilometers. But nothing too concerning. Mostly when we're sort of changing between those gravelly bits, sandy bits. Now I've done a lot, I've done a lot of urban riding with the 11. 
and this is the first time I'm using it on the dirt. Um, now because it puts out so much power, you do have to be a little bit careful with the, with the throttle. Especially when you're hitting those surfaces where it becomes really loose or a little bit rough. Right there. But that's okay. Working out really well. Let's get back onto a bit of bitumen. On the bitumen, it's smooth. Very smooth. front motor, finally finding some grip, hanging on to the handlebars. I do find it a little bit more intimidating than the 10 to ride. Probably due to the power that this thing puts out. We come down this hill here. I can keep the speed down with the full hydraulic disc brakes. It's exactly the same setup as the 10. And they work phenomenally. Oh, so as you can see, it's pretty rough. I can feel it in the arms. Get a bit of grass there. No issues on the grass, no issues on the gravel. Trouble is still a bit touchy though. Seeing how the 11 goes, getting up this hill. It is a rather, rather steep hill and a loose surface, so this should be interesting. So I'm not too sure how well the camera's picking that up, but on the steepness scale, it's bloody steep. Just taking it easy. as the hill starts to flatten out down here. There's no issues there. As we get into the hill, we'll see how, see how it performs. I probably have picked the roughest part of the road. See how steep this hill is. But you wouldn't want to be walking up it. The Wolf Warrior 11 has enough power by far to get up it. No problems whatsoever. I'm in dual motor mode, and look what it'll do is come to a standstill here. You can go up the slope and just use the torque. Oh, front wheel find me some grip. I was supposed to be going up this kind of slow, but right now we're hitting 50 k's. The wolf is just getting up in here with no problems whatsoever. as we get to the top of the hill. 11 comes with a few bells and whistles. <laughs> no indicators. But it does come with the trademark 
LED spotlights up the front there, which I've got on just for a bit of safety. Um, you've got your eco mode buttons on the right, your dual motor buttons as well, so you can turn them on and off. And then obviously the, the signature horn, which is just as loud as the pen. in a way it's doing it a fair lot easier than, than how we're going with the 10. This is exactly the same path I took it on. I mean power wise it's definitely doing well with those 11 inch wheels and being a little bit wider definitely doing that quite easy too. So no complaints there. the loose gravel you do feel it coming out and just obviously being careful with the throttle letting that thing work oh just power for days Uh, to tell you actually what you're in. You can only tell um, when you're riding it. It would be nice if they gave you an LED display on it or with the buttons depressed just so you could actually tell. I mean, you will eventually tell once you hit your motor when you're riding it. But some sort of indication would be nice. Still in eco mode. Oh, sorry, single motor mode. So come down the hill. Now, I've lowered the tyre pressure by about 2 psi. And that feels a little bit better, to be honest. Come up the hill. Let's get some dual motor going. No, that's not it. No, that's not it. Still not it. I might actually be an eco mode. And that's exactly what I was talking about, having the buttons depress. So I don't believe that the 11 is actually as nimble as the 10. With the extra weight, the wider wheels. It is probably a little bit more stable in environments like this. But I don't believe it has. I don't believe it has the agility as the 10. Definitely has the power though. As we hit about 50 kilometers around the corner, lowering that PSI a little bit has made it a little bit better in the turns. Does feel a 
little bit cumbersome though, probably due to the size of the scooter. But this off-road scenario is exactly what this Wolf Warrior is made for.